Loving God, we come together to celebrate your Son, whose birth restored hope to the world. In this season of joy, we pray for those who need that hope today. For those in the darkness of despair who need the hope of your light. Those burdened by loss who need the hope of your comfort. Those surrounded by conflict and war who need the hope of your peace. And those without refuge, the oppressed, who need the hope of your compassionate mercy and justice. Help us, your church, to fulfill your purpose on earth. May we be your arm of hope, reaching beyond the walls of worship into the world. We thank you for the gift of your Son, who alone can satisfy the longing of hearts. Until that day when we see him face to face, we wait with joyful expectation in the blessed hope of his return. Amen.
Early in the evening, God called out to Adam and Eve, but they hid from him. Why were you hiding, God asked. And Adam replied, we were afraid and hid because we are naked. Then God asked, who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the forbidden tree? Adam confessed that he had disobeyed, but blamed Eve, and Eve blamed the snake. God told them, because you have sinned, you will not live forever in the garden with me. From this day forward, you will work by the sweat of your brow to grow food, and in pain you will bear children. You will labor over the dust from which I made you until the day that you die, when you will become dust once more. Come ye sinners, poor and needy, lost and ruined by the fall.
the angel called out to Abraham, Because you obeyed God and were willing to sacrifice your only son, the Lord repeats his promise to you. Your descendants will outnumber the stars in the sky and the grains of sand on the shore. Through you, I will bless all the nations on earth, and from your bloodline, my only son will be born. Hope is coming for those who walk in spiritual darkness, for you will see a great light. I will give you a son that all who face certain death may find life through him. He will become a great leader and will be called wise and marvelous counselor, strong ruler, eternal provider and protector, the Prince of Peace. Leading with justice and righteousness, his government will be the last, and his reign will be forever.
From the roots of David's family tree, new growth will sprout. A branch will blossom and bear fruit. He will have the Spirit of God, judging his people with compassion and justice. In that day, the wild beast will no longer stalk the weaker animal. Both hunter and prey will live peacefully side by side. Even a little child will lead them without fear, for the garden will be restored. Creation will be free from harm, and all the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. In the city of Nazareth, a girl named Mary was engaged to Joseph, a descendant of David. One day, the angel Gabriel appeared to her. You will have a son, he told her, and you are to call him Jesus. This child will be the Son of God, the promised hope. The Lord will give him the throne of David, and he will rule over his kingdom forever. And though Mary did not fully understand how this would happen, she was obedient and said, I am God's willing servant. Let your word be fulfilled through me. Then the angel left her.
When the Roman government ordered a census of the people, Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem to register. While they were there, Mary gave birth to a son. She wrapped him in cloth, and because there was no room for them in the inn, she placed the baby in a manger used for feeding hay to the animals. That night, in the fields outside of Bethlehem, a group of shepherds guarded their flock of sheep. Suddenly, an angel appeared before them, and the sky was filled with brilliant light. Don't be afraid, said the angel. I have come to bring you good news. A child, the promised Savior, has been born in Bethlehem. You will find him wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. The hills echoed with the sound of angels singing, Glory to God! And then, as suddenly as they had appeared, they were gone. The shepherds left immediately and found the child, just as the angel had said. Waiting for the skies to sing to us, baby. 
After Jesus was born, a group of astronomers noticed a new star in the sky. Familiar with the ancient prophecy, they knew that this event signaled the birth of the long-awaited hope of Israel, the one who would be her king. So they followed the star that led them to the place where Jesus was. There they bowed before him and offered gifts worthy of royalty, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Kings of earth on a course unknown, bearing gifts from afar, hoping, praying, following beyond a star, silhouette of a caravan, painted against the sky, wise men searching for the whole. One king held the frankincense, one 
Before the world was made, Christ existed. He was with God and was himself God. Out of darkness, shining as the light of life, he created everything that lives. After the fall, the world was filled with darkness again. So the life-giving light came to the world in human form. Although he was born into the same world that he made, many people saw him as a stranger and rejected him. Those who recognized him then and now receive his light and become God's children. And this is our living hope. The light of life shines in the darkness. This true light is the one and only light, and all who see it have seen the light of God. No one, no thing, not even the darkness can extinguish it.
Go now as messengers of God's hope. Where there is darkness, shine the hope of his light. Where there is conflict, spread the hope of his peace. Where there is despair, share the hope of his gift of eternal life. May you live in service to him whose promise was fulfilled, whose hope is restored, and is alive in you through the birth of his son, Jesus.